Hello and welcome. Thank you. Uh, year number six for Adirondack North Country Pride. And when I call it Adirondack North Country Pride, that's what I mean. Uh, we are here to serve Franklin, Essex, and Clinton counties. We're so happy to be uh, able to do this uh, post COVID. Well, we're not post COVID yet, uh, but. Uh, be able to have it this year when uh, we were not able to last year. I do want to uh, say that uh, masks are uh, highly encouraged. I would like to say required. Uh, this is a, a we are a more or less a private organization, if you will, a, a not for profit. Uh, so we, we're hoping uh, to combat the spread of uh, COVID. So please wear your mask. Please stay your distances. Because uh, we do not want this to be a spreader event. We want you all to be healthy and safe, um, and uh, a little precaution would be wonderful. Uh, I do want to thank uh, my uh, planning committee uh, members, uh, if they could uh, come up. Uh, Jamie Young behind uh, the camera, uh, Jennifer Callen, Matt Loesch, uh, Ruth Misty. Misty is here somewhere, uh, Sean Brace, uh, Sean Reed, our uh, musician extraordinaire, uh, Caitlin Gurren, Caitlin, I know she's here somewhere, she's, she's at our table, go say hello to Caitlin. Uh, this year, it was actually a lot of fun, because uh, uh, we had uh, more people on our uh, planning committee. I want to thank um, Nicole Black, and Amy Hayes from Behavioral Health Services North, BHSN, and uh, Shelby Gagne from Planned Parenthood. She did excellent. So I thank all of uh, the people uh, from the other organizations who helped out. I uh, very uh, especially want to thank, I know she's not here right now, uh, but Courtney uh, Meisenheimer from the uh, mayor's office. Uh, she worked with me on all of this. She did a fantastic job. Uh, I owe her a big hug when she shows up later. Courtney did a, a great, a uh, lot of good work. She's not part of our planning process, but she was a great interface with the city. And I thank her so much for all the help she did. This year, uh, I want to welcome CDPHP. Uh, they are a new sponsor this year, uh, so welcome. Uh, please go over and say hello. Planned Parenthood, uh, as in previous years, is uh, here with us. Uh, Iris's Cafe and Wine Bar. Oh, I love their margarita nights. Those are so good. And her staff is just fantastic. Uh, Plasper United Methodist, uh, thanks for the tables and chairs that we all able to use. And of course, uh, UU uh, Fellowship of Plasper. Uh, I want to thank all the organizations who are here tabling with us this year. Uh, thank you for coming out uh, in a COVID year. Um, and I also want to thank all the many organizations who donated to our raffle. So we have a big raffle going on in the back. Go see Peter. Um, we have, I believe, uh, $1,500 worth of uh, raffle items. So Peter will tell you the price for the tickets. Um, you must be present to win, okay. uh, but uh, we got some really great raffle okay. items, so please go see um, Peter. Uh, we have some very distinguished speakers. Uh, we'll start uh, in just a moment. But I want to thank all of you who are here today for coming out. And believe me, I was scared <laughs> yesterday and today as I watched the weather. Um, uh, but thank you for coming out. Thank you for making this uh, our sixth year. And certainly this is something that we're looking to continue every year uh, as much as we can. Um, I, I want to uh, introduce our first speaker, our first uh, two uh, items. Um, Billy Jones, uh, our New York State uh, Assembly person. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it. Billy, it's been wonderful to be here every year that we, uh, six years, so 
Billy. Thank you, and thank you for uh, allowing me to be your representative in the in the state legislature. I, I really do appreciate that. And when I say allowing me to be your representative, I represent you, and I represent inclusion, and I represent equality, and I will continue to be a partner to fight for your rights. I want to thank the Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance. Kelly stopped the rain here today, so um, we could do this. They've been a wonderful organization uh, for inclusion and helping people in the North Country here, and it's an honor to be a partner with you. Thank you all for coming out, organizing this. We need this, especially in the year that we've had. We need to do this. I just want, I want to give my, uh, my heartfelt thank you to everyone coming out, all the uh, booths, all the organizations, and please, please, please reach out to my office, everyone here, if in any way I can help. But we must continue to fight for everyone's rights, fight for inclusion, Love is love, equality for everyone. Thank you so much. This is fun having a little shower cap for the microphone. Oh no. Uh, Jamie, uh, and where is uh, Brad Miller? Jamie and Brad. Do you have the plaque? Oh, good. Uh, so I want to really um, thank someone very special this year. Uh, Officer uh, Brad Miller from the City of Plattsburgh uh, Police Department. Every year he has uh, come in on his own time. He's volunteered his efforts uh, to lead our parade, whether we were marching on the sidewalks or if we did the rolling pride last year. Uh, Brad has been there every year for us on his time. That's a special uh, dedication, as a special commitment uh, to us and our community. Uh, and unfortunately, he's retiring. Oh, he's too young to retire, don't you think? Uh, so anyway, uh, Brad is retiring this year, and we wanted to thank him officially. Uh, we have a little plaque for you on behalf of Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance to Officer Brad Miller, uh, Plattsburgh City Police. Thank you for the work that you've done on our community. I just want to um, let everybody know that it's been a uh, two working with Kelly Metzger, Jamie Young, and uh, people coming together uh, for the community. Um, be who you are. We love who you are. Um, don't be afraid to be yourself. And also remember that everyone here has a value. Okay? You're valuable to us and to the community. And I appreciate the opportunity, and it was my pleasure. And I'm not retiring this year. So I still have five and a half months left. <laughs> All right, but this is your last pride with us. But you can come back as a private citizen. So thank you, uh, Officer Brad Miller, for uh, six years of dedicated uh, volunteerism. Mike Cashman, uh, town of Plattsburgh. Do we have a little? Yes, we have a little buddy for Mike. There we go. Thank you so much, Kelly, and to the entire team of all the organizers, the vendors, the sponsors. The message that I really want to carry to you today is from the downtown Plattsburgh to the town center in the town of Plattsburgh and the greater North Country. You are seen, you are loved, you are family, you are community members. And things that we often take for granted are things like we know and we must continue to advocate that pronouns matter, right? We need to continue to make sure that every facet of our community integrates diversity, inclusiveness, and more importantly, what the sense of community here is. Today it may be raining a little bit, but you folks will push away the storm and with the pride of love, we will bring the rainbows and the sunshine that the North Country needs. Be safe, 
be well, and I'm already looking forward to next year where it really will be sunny. Thanks. All right. Uh, we have a, a very special uh, uh, young lady here today. Uh, there is uh, another event after ours. Uh, and Kathleen Watt. Kathleen, where is, there she is. I'm going to let you uh, introduce you, who you are, what you're doing, and why this is so important. And thank you for being here. Um, Alrighty. Hi everyone and thank you for having me here today. My name is Kathleen Watt and I'm a senior here at SUNY Plattsburgh. I'm an advocate and an ally for the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, I grew up in a large, diverse family. Some of my family members are adopted, some of them are gay, some of them are trans, some of them are Vietnamese, black, Portuguese, and a variety of diverse sexual, gender, ethnic, and racial people. Um, a year ago today, I can look back on my life and see that I had a beautiful little sister. She was smart, witty, funny, but also struggled a lot internally. Today, fast forward a year, I gained the most amazing, handsome little brother who I could not be more proud of. Kyle has come a long way in his journey, but it's still not over for him, and I'm here speaking on his behalf, which he said was fine to do. Um, Kyle was a very... Kyle was very fortunate to have such a loving family with open arms to accept him for who he truly is, which not a lot of trans youth can say. Um, my mother got him into Choices Counseling, which is an inclusive counseling center that helps members of the LGBTQIA community receive counseling and help navigate their experiences in a healthy way. Um, I remember asking Kyle back in March, a few weeks after he came out to me a question. I asked, what happened? You were wearing bikinis this past summer. You know, what happened between then and now? And he said, that was not me. I felt like I was following all the gender norms because that's what I was supposed to do. Um, that very afternoon, we went out to Target and I bought him some boy swim shorts. It's not our job to fully understand because some may never will, but we have to respect it. And I will do everything in my power to make my brother feel as happy and comfortable in this life as I can. So no mom, this is not a phase, this is who they are. It's vital to know how you as parents, friends, teachers, caregivers, and allies react to situations. Children and teens are very vulnerable and susceptible to your actions and expressions, whether they are forthright or not. Therefore, you need to be mindful and respectful when your children and friends open up something to you that is so extremely important to them. You can help so many people by being a positive support system and an ally, and having a positive support system can save lives. There are so many resources out there for trans youth if you choose to look. The Trevor Project is an amazing non-for-profit organization that provides crisis intervention and suicide prevention to those in the LGBTQ community. There are other local resources such as the Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance who have graciously put on this amazing event. Um, Kyle is 14 years old as of July and as you may know this is a transition for a lot of children and teens. Why Kyle is a man, he still has the physical features of a woman, he still gets his period, um, and he still is identified as a woman in doctor's offices. And it can be really traumatic for trans youth to go through puberty and all of the bodily changes that occur when that's not who they are. It's extremely important for all people, especially trans people, to receive equitable healthcare services that do not discriminate, and making sure that their voices and concerns are heard, understood, and empathized with healthcare professionals. Trans men are still able to become pregnant and have families, and for some that's not what they want. Being able to have choices at affordable rates and insurance that covers health care is a basic human necessity. Protecting this community and especially trans youth is vital. Today, located at, um, today at 4 p.m., located at the Harborside Stage or 2 Dock Street, Plattsburgh, New York, there's a stationary demonstration in support of women's reproductive rights, and I encourage all who would like to attend to do so. We're having a lot of guest speakers that are going to give great information on current issues and what we can do to support each other. Thank you again for having me here today, and I hope you enjoy the event. This is fun. Thank you, Kathleen. It's so great. And thank you for coming and being a part of this. I very uh, appreciate uh, that. Uh, so this has been uh, a really interesting year uh, putting this event together. 
Uh, we had uh, planned many things uh, because of COVID. Uh, some things were not able to happen. Um, it's been a lot of fun uh, uh, putting this together. Um, there were some issues with the route that we were looking at for the uh, for the parade this year, and we did really plan on having an in the street parade. That was our goal. Uh, it uh, there was some confusion. Uh, the route that we had originally uh, sought. Uh, put us in front of another organization uh, and we could not tie up uh, their access to, to their event and we totally support them in every way. Um, but we had to change routes. Um, and it was a scramble, literally at the last moment. Uh, we worked with the, the mayor's office to find uh, different alternatives. Uh, we did come up with the uh, alternative route, and I, I do want to thank uh, Mayor Chris Rosenquist because he was instrumental in coming up with an alternate route for us that would have taken us from SUNY Plattsburgh uh, down Brinkerhof over Oak and then down here. Uh, so I, I want to thank him for the hard work that he did uh, organizing uh, that alternate route for us, working with uh, SUNY Plattsburgh staff. There was uh, some negative comments that came out uh, yesterday on Facebook. Uh, some uh, harsh words were said against uh, Mayor Rosenquist, the city council, and members of his uh, office staff. Uh, I want to really say now here for the record, we support uh, Mayor Rosenquist. Uh, what happened was unfortunate. Yes, it was. Uh, do we have to do some things uh, a little better next year. Yes, we do, uh, but I fully support uh, uh, Chris, the work he did on our behalf. I know that was a lot of hard work uh, getting things uh, coordinated with SUNY. And I want to thank SUNY for uh, allowing us to uh, potentially use uh, their uh, facilities. Uh, City Council fully supports us, and I want to make that known. When we were at the uh, September 16th meeting, I want to say that was the date. Uh, we had a lot of wonderful support from City Council. Um, and as I said, uh, Courtney uh, Meisenheimer of the uh, mayor staff has been fantastic uh, working with us and helping to get all of this put together. So I do, uh, I, I want to make sure that uh, Chris and his team are uh, looked after, they're taken care of. And with that, Chris, uh, now it's your turn. It's been fun having the mayors every year come up and, and speak. So, well, uh, thank you, and you know, I I really appreciate the work that you all are doing organizing this event uh, six years in a row now. Uh, yeah, next year, of course, we support. We'll continue to support. Uh, I look out, and I do want to thank uh, not only just the supporters, but everybody who's here uh, in attendance to celebrate Pride. Uh, all the vendors and the, the people who came to present their organizations to also celebrate Pride. But I also want to remind you that as much as we can celebrate, acknowledge, and and really blow the roof off of a, a nice band in a celebration, Pride is protest. Pride is protest. It's a protest for equal rights. It's a, pro it's a protest for, for, for fair treatment. And we'll continue to protest on pride. We'll continue to fight for fair and equal treatment for everybody. And then that's it. Thank you so much. Take to it. Okay. Our, our next gentleman, <laughs> no, not you, him. Uh, I, I knew Owen Gilpo from many, many, many moons ago, many decades. Uh, and we uh, refound each other uh, several years ago when we were doing the transgender forums uh, here in Plattsburgh. And we thank the uh, UUFP because we were able to use your uh, buildings and your facilitators. We had Julie Gray Owens come up from uh, uh, Long Island. 
And, and I, I got to meet Owen again as, as his wonderful, handsome self. Uh, and we've been great friends ever since. Uh, and Owen was a founding board member, as I and several others, uh, for Gender Equality New York, uh, Jenny. Um, so it is with great pleasure. Uh, this is your fifth or sixth year with us. Every year we get a hug and we get a photo. So Owen is a great and special friend. Uh, Owen um, is uh, with the New York State Diversity and Inclusion. Uh, he's a specialist um, with the Office of Management, Department of Civil Service. I think I butchered that well enough. <laughs> so, uh, Owen. Oh, this is not my hour-long speech, so I apologize. But please, practice, practice safe speaking. Wear your shower cap or whatever you want to call it. But practice safety. So um, apparently I'm going to speak in a little bit, but thanks for having me. My other, ooh, that, that went well. My other dear and wonderful friend who's been with us for many, many years, uh, uh, Ron Zaki from uh, New York State uh, Division of Human Rights. And I want, I want to talk to you later because remember I asked you for like a whole bunch of flyers and brochures and I promised you I would use them? You go back and see our table. I'm using your brochures everywhere I go, so they are being put to good use. Thank you, Kelly. So, um, my name is Ron Zecki, my pronouns are he, they, and I am from the New York State Division of Human Rights. I'm also here representing Governor Hochul. She sent a message for this event, which I will read. I'm also so proud to see this event happening again last year. I missed it. I know that you did do a car thing, but um, I have come almost every year. And uh, it is a really great event, and it's great to see so many people out here. I know that there was some hopes to have this look a little different. And uh, I appreciate people coming out and standing up and standing tall in their convictions for what should be happening and what will happen next year. So, on behalf of Governor Hochul, she sends, it's my pleasure to send greetings to the LGBTQ community joined by family, friends, and supporters for this Pride event hosted by the Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance. New York State has long been a champion of social and civil justice, and we are strengthened by the freedom that is fundamental right of all. In the Adirondack region, we are proud of the progress that has been made in achieving greater equality for our LGBTQ families, friends, and neighbors. I applaud your local alliance for organizing this event as we stand with pride and reaffirmed commitment to furthering New York's progressive values. Thank you so much and have a happy Pride. Owen. He did, he turned it off. Welcome again and happy Pride. I want to thank, uh, as Kelly said, uh, we've been friends for a long time. Kelly and I first met each other when we weren't Owen and Kelly. And so we reunited at a trans forum. Um, and this woman said, I have been wanting to meet you for so long. And I was like, glad my wife isn't here. I don't know what this is about. And so uh, then she explained. So 
so it was all good. I want to thank uh, the Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance uh, for asking me to speak today. Um, it will not be an hour long, I promise you. Um, it's truly an honor to be here in the North Country, a place that I consider home. Uh, no matter where I reside, my soul is in the Adirondacks and the North Country. And so I uh, appreciate that. I was working here in Plattsburgh when Kelly said we're going to have our first ever Pride event. And I was uh, happy to be part of that and make, it a, um, make a promise to come back every year uh, for a hug and a picture. Um, and so I appreciate everyone coming out and uh, Mother Nature does her own thing and, and yet we're still here. And I want to thank my friend and colleague Ron uh, for presenting the letter from Governor Hoku, who is our strong supporter of LBGTQ uh, New Yorkers and our rights and has been fighting with us all along. And I especially want to thank all of you for coming out today to show your pride, uh, whether a member of the LBGTQ community or an ally, friend, parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, siblings, nibblings, uh, any, any uh, way, shape or form of supporter. I, I appreciate your being here. And many believe that pride takes place every year in June. A lot of people think that the whole world seems to open up to rainbows, but we know pride is 24 Seven three sixty five. Am I right? And having said that, um, it is convenient to have it in October because we get to talk about LBGTQ History Month, and I'd like to change that terminology to LBGTQ Their Story Month because I think it's important that we be inclusive of all of the um, members of our community who have fought long and hard. Um, some silently just being themselves, um, others out and proud, those that are rioting, those that are in the halls of legislature trying to uh, protect our rights, uh, everyone involved. So um, the month was started back in 1994, uh, and I think it's really important for all of us. I know I'm still learning about the transgender history, and I should have started with this. Um, I use the pronouns he, him. I am an out and proud transgender man. Um, and so um, I come to you here and I stand before here. And um, part of my job at the state is that I'm out and proud and I'm transgender and I'm working to make sure um, not only the employees of New York State but other New Yorkers understand our community the TGNC community as well as the LBGTQ community and I, I'm proud to say that I get to be out as I do that and never would I have ever imagined that would be the case. So October is also um, National Coming Out Day is uh, a week from Monday and it's a time when individuals um, come out of the closet so to speak and become visible and it's an important day it's a difficult day um, it's not easy to be out and proud and it's not easy that taking that initial step and I think that uh, it's really important and we know when people take that step um, either really good things can happen but sometimes not really good things and that's why it's important um, as Kathleen said that there's an, at least one adult somewhere that shows support because we know that reduces the instance of suicide. And that's really, really important. Just one supportive adult. So if you're a teacher, a community leader, just a neighbor, anyone, that's extremely, extremely important. Sorry, this is the first time I'm actually going 21st century tech. So, um, so coming out, I was 45 years old, and Kelly's already told you we've been friends for a really, really long time, so that um, explains at least how old I am, or partially. I like the way you said before, you were Owen and I was Kelly. That was right, that's right. So let me tell you, I first learned the word transgender when I was 45 years old. Up until then, I didn't know what was wrong with me, because it seemed that society was saying that I was wrong. Not something I did, 
but my very being, who I was, was wrong because I didn't fit the norms and expectations of society as someone who was female and that's what I was assigned at birth. And I knew at four that's not who I was. I was definitely boy. And I couldn't figure out why I couldn't play baseball and why I had to play softball in a skirt because who does that? How does one slide into second base in a skirt? That, that was traumatic for me. And um, it doesn't sound like it should be traumatic. It sounds like, oh, it's just a little annoyance. But trust me, for me, that was one of the most humiliating times to have to wear a skirt and sort of play something sort of like baseball. So, um, and, and there were other times, and I want to talk a little bit about the seriousness of trying to live um, in a gender that you're not for 45 to 47 years. Um, my mom was so adamant that I just wasn't the woman that I needed to be. And that the thing with my life was I was unhappy because I needed, just needed a good man. Well, for me to present as female and to be in a relationship with a man took a lot of alcohol. And every time she said that, I thought, it's going to be a lot more alcohol. And that's not a good way to live your life depending on a substance so that you can be what people want you to be. And I'm glad to say that um, I haven't had alcohol in, uh, since 1994 because I decided it wasn't a family tradition that I needed to carry on. But it also didn't help me to be honest. And so one of the first things I needed to learn was to be brutally honest and be honest with myself. The other thing about society telling you that you're wrong and not being able to identify who you are is it takes a mental toll. And people often associate mental illness with being LBGTQ because we're making wrong choices or we just have mental illness of some kind. And though some of us may struggle with mental illness, it's not because we're LBGTQ, it's not because I'm transgender, it's because people were telling me who I am was wrong. So how do you go through life carrying that with you? Or how do you go through life in the closet? And I think, as Kathleen said, it's very important that we have the proper medical care and mental health care that we need to be productive citizens. Because transgender or a gay, lesbian, bisexual, those are only a part of who we are, right? I'm most proud that I'm a grandfather, right? I've got two adorable grandchildren. Um, I owe one of them a horse, a real horse, and uh, she's learning to ride a horse, and now I'm gonna get called out on that promise. Um, I'm a dad, I'm a, a husband, an uncle, you know, I work for the state, I'm a state employee. I'm a diversity and inclusion specialist. Like, do you know how cool that is? To be working every day fighting for diversity and inclusion, that's like, I didn't even know there was one of those things, and that is cool, I get to be one. So it's just part of who I am, right? I'm a baseball fan. We are so much more than just our gender, gender identity and our sexual orientation. So somebody, a good therapist, had her therapist for 14 years. She was also was here in Plattsburgh. Um, and, um, so she said, well, I was trying to explain, like, no, I'm not this, literally taking my hands, I'm not this, I'm this. And all of a sudden a light went off and she said, are you transgender? And I said, I don't know, what, what does that mean? And so then she told me, well, your assigned sex at birth was female and if you're transgender, then you'd be ma a man, a male. And I'm like, oh my God, yes. Like, wow, seriously, it's a thing? That's me, I have an explanation for who I am. And wait, there's other people out there like that? And I think that's what's important about being visible. And um, as trans men, it's really easy for us to be what we call stealth, right? Most people don't know I'm a trans man. They just think, and I hate this quote, but there's a lot of people tell me that, well, I thought you were a real man. Well, yes, thank you, I am. That's a microaggression. If you're not sure about microaggressions, look it up. 
So um, I am a real man, and I just um, get to present as that. But it's important for those of us. Um, so I'm 57 now, and I'm proud of that because uh, it didn't think I'd get to be 57, and I certainly didn't get to think that I'd be a man at 57 with a really cool goatee and uh, things like that, right? And somebody telling me I'm handsome, although my wife does do that. So um, I think it's important for us to be visible, though, because um, all the trans boys out there need to know we're here. And you can get to be old, too. And you get to have cool jobs. I was in Malone in August. Shout out to anybody from Malone who's here. And I had a 15-year-old um, come bouncing, like literally bouncing up to me, trans teen. And he said to me, I can't believe one of me, someone like me, gets to work in New York State government. How cool is that? It made my day. It made the three and a half hour trip so worth it, right? And it still does. It warms my heart. So I think um, visibility is important. And that's what marching in the streets is. That's what being out here at Pride it is what speaking up and, and speaking out is all about. So um, I just want to leave you with one thing. Um, live authentically, whoever you are, because a lot of the mental pressure of not giving in to what society believes we should be in whatever way, shape, or form, um, it feels a lot better to be yourself. It feels better to be honest, not just with the world, but with yourself. And um, it's worth celebrating whoever you are. And if you doubt it, please talk to me. I'll tell you why you're worth it, because I think every single one of you are worth it. I appreciate you being here. And again, celebrate Pride 24-7, 365. Happy Pride, everyone. Okay, thank you, Owen. I, I want to echo something uh, that uh, Owen said. People in my generation, we didn't have these words. We didn't have these understandings. We didn't have these concepts. And like Owen said, I didn't know what was wrong with me either. Because wearing a dress, doing hair, doing makeup, and uh, being feminine, was something that men didn't do. And I, um, it was a hard p point in our lives, uh, and we're going back uh, 20, 30, uh, 40, 50, 60 years ago. Uh, it was not easy back then. We didn't know what was wrong with us. One of the things I love today, oh my gosh, is the progress LGBTQ has made. We have so many of our young people, our middle school, high school, college, young adults who are able to come out and live authentically uh, at younger and younger ages. This is fantastic. I'm so happy for our young people that they can do this uh, today and not have to uh, go live a life of fear, a life of shame, and a life of hiding that so many of us in, in the older generation uh, had to do. So thank you, Owen, for those comments because it, it, it really rang home true. One last person I want to uh, introduce you to, Peter. Peter is running our raffle, so I want him to uh, say a few words on that. And uh... <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Peter, and I am part of the planning committee. Um, just wanted to introduce myself, tell you a little bit about the raffle. But I wanted to start, uh, my husband, daughter, and I were new to the area, and we're very happy that we found the Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance. It's been a great um, experience uh, connecting with the local community. Specifically with this raffle, it was very easy to fill that big table back there. We have over $1,500 in donations. All of it is donated, and so all of the proceeds will benefit uh, the Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance. Um, so the prices, just so you know, dollar for one, uh, $5 for seven tickets, and uh, $20 for an arm's length. I have a very arm, long arm, so ask for me. I'll be in the back. 
Um, and I want to take this opportunity to thank the local businesses who are very generous, including Twisted Carrot, Bear Town Ski, uh, Greer uh, Sicarelli Creative Photographers. You can win a mini photo shoot. It's fun. Um, a beautiful mess, great store in town that I had the opportunity to visit the other day. A lot of great items. Holidays are coming up. Coffee Cat, uh, Cumberland Cinemas, Texas Roadhouse, and we have, if anyone is a fan of Texas Roadhouse, I am. We have appetizer certificates in the back, and I have a lot of them, so take two. Um, Adirondack 1892 Home Store in Malone, New York. Um, there's actually two $100 gift certificates. Great store, um, and uh, you'll yeah. And also uh, Mirror Lake Inn, uh, the Pendragon Theater, which is uh, oh excuse me, see it's, I'm new, I'm new. <laughs> Pendragon Theater, um, which is uh, worth two hundred dollars. Two tickets to four performances. The Misty Coventry Gift Shop which is one of our uh, tents over there. We have some items from them. Chasey Orchards, Lake Placid Center for the Arts, Lake Placid Pub and Brewery, Link's Link Arts Center across the street, and uh, Sale Adirondack, a uh, basket from them. And I just wanted to also thank my mom in the back. She wrapped all of those items. Um, she was up late last night and also uh, donated a few of them. So thank you, mom. I think she's on her phone. <laughs> All right, thanks everyone, and please stop by. The drawing will be after the drag performance. And with that, thank you. Uh, happy Pride. Uh, stick around for the drag show, which will be coming up. Thank you for coming out, making year number six happen. Uh, next year, we will work uh, harder. We'll work to find more uh, corporate sponsors and corporate donors. And again, uh, we look forward to being in the streets next year. Woo! I agree, uh, that's where pride belongs, but we have to do some more work on our end as well. We thank the mayor, we thank the city council, and we thank his staff. Um, let, let the fun continue, please. Woo!